TVC News, first with Britain. Okay, uh, thank you very much for staying with us and um, welcome back. And if you've just joined us, it's okay. There's still a lot of me on the bone. Um, thank you for joining us. My um, guest this time is uh, Mr. Lado Tuma Binuri. He's a financial and uh, policy analyst. Uh, thank you very much as always, Dotun, for coming on. Thank you Appreciate for your having coming me on. once again. Indeed. All right then. <laughs> Our pleasure. Yes, um, yesterday, uh, uh, Ngozi Okonjo Uyala, two-time uh, Minister of Finance in Nigeria in the past, um, she became the, she was appointed the DG of um, the World Trade Organization. She's going to be in office till the uh, October, August, uh, uh, August uh, 2018. 2025. Yeah, 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 2025. And her appointment is starting on the 1st of March. March yes, the 1st of March, right up until that time. Now, she has already said that she's going to swing into action, hit the ground running, and one of her main interests is going to be uh, bringing soccer to peoples that have been devastated uh, by fallouts of, you know, the pandemic, the global pandem pandemic that we have, um, COVID-19. Uh, but before we uh, go into it, we have a covering report produced by our news department. A princess from the Obihai royal family of Ogwashiuku, her father, Professor Chukuka Okonjo, is a traditional ruler of the town. She had an early education in Enugu and Ibadan before proceeding to the United States of America in 1973. She was admitted into the prestigious Harvard University, where she studied economics and graduated in 1976. Five years later, she obtained her doctorate degree in regional economics and development from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Building her career saw Ngozi Okonjo Weala give 25 years of service to the World Bank as a developmental economist and rose to become the Managing Director of Operations, a position she held between 2007 and 2011. Her first stint as Minister of Finance in Nigeria under the Olusha Ngobasanjo administration will not be forgotten in the haste. She was able to negotiate a debt relief of $18 billion from the Pari Club in 2005. She was reappointed by President Goodluck Jonathan in 2011. Even with her additional role as a coordinating minister of the economy, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Weala had a handful of distraction from the conflict of views among the Central Bank of Nigeria, NNPC, the country's biggest revenue earner, and the Ministry of Finance. Apart from the latest achievement of being the first African and first female to become the WTO's Director General, Ngozi Okonjo Weala is a woman of many firsts. She is the first African to become World Bank's managing director. She is the first woman to be Minister of Finance in Nigeria and first person to be reappointed Minister of Finance after four years interval by another government. Ungozi Okonje Weala is married to Ikemba, a neurosurgeon. They are blessed with four children. Okay, then, uh, so you heard it there, uh, Ngozi Okonje Wela um, rose to the top in the World Bank, becoming Managing Director, Managing Director Operations, the number two uh, office in, in the World Bank. Um, but now, um, uh, Doton, she, as a woman of many firsts, you know, started out in, in Harvard, you know, took a PhD from MIT, uh, and all that we've just heard, uh, our Ngozi, Ngozi. <laughs> it's a Nigerian that is making us proud. But uh, beyond that, because it could have been anybody, and so we're, we're not going to be able to lean on that matter about being a Nigerian. Yeah, we're happy, we'll take it, thank you, we're proud. Um, but what, how do you expect, how much of a difference do you expect her to make? Uh, she's very, very well qualified, uh, very, very well, well connected, and uh, you've heard of her ambitions uh, in her job. Are you optimistic? I'm very, very much optimistic, and uh, there's never a better time for an African to lead the World Trade Organization than now. Uh, well, why did I say that? Uh, this is a time where, Nigeria, uh, where Africa is uh, trying to uh, integrate economically. 
that by uh, signing the Africa, free, Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement. So as, I come, as Africa is coming together as one to trade as, uh, as a business partner, as business partners, then we have an African, a Nigerian also, uh, uh, be leading the World Trade Organization. Because if you actually look at the essence of World Trade Organization, the essence is actually to uh, bring about free trade mm -hmm. among nations, mm -hmm. among, on a multilateral mm -hmm. level, mm -hmm. not on a bilateral level as uh, uh, the U.S. Um, past uh, administration, but Donald Trump was doing. If you look at, look at um, Donald Trump, that's why he was actually really against the uh, World Trade Organization. He believes so much on one-on-one -on -one organization, uh, uh, bilateral uh, trade, that is bilateral trade. Let me deal with you. What do you have to offer? What do you have to gain? So that's why I always say Afri Af American first, because you can't go on a multilateral organization and say American first. This is an organization that has 146 members, uh, where everybody, where decision has to be unilateral. All of us need to agree on, on this before we can uh, go ahead. So that is one of the reasons why Donald Trump was totally uh, maybe against um, uh, 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 endorsement as a um, World Trade Organization. But now that uh, Joe, Joe Biden came in, uh, he approved, uh, he supported that because he's a, she's a woman of quality. She, as we always say, a woman of force. She's first uh, female minister of finance in, in Nigeria, it, the first person to be a two-time minister of finance and also a coordinating minister. In, so, so many firsts uh, uh, are in her favor. And at the same time, she has the quality. If it's in terms of education, in terms of exposure, in terms of uh, international connection, so just just naming. So the I think is a is a blessing to Africa. She's a blessing to Africa, and it's also a blessing to the world. She has a lot to deliver. Uh, and world uh, expectants. Uh, uh, what what difference do you expect um, her special credentials um, uh, to um, uh, bring to her her quest? Uh, by which I mean that um, as you've just you know reiterated, uh, a minister of finance twice you exactly. know, uh, in, in Nigeria. She knows the lie of the ground, and uh, that's one of the special qualifications that she brings to the job. She's an African, she's a Nigerian, she knows the lie of the ground, um, as opposed to someone else um, who might be equally as qualified, but perhaps not have those uh, special uh, qualifications in having been a minister in Africa, uh, and in our case in, in, in West Africa. Uh, what, what sort of, um, what, what age do you think this special, you know, uh, this, this happy sort of circumstance uh, brings to her skill set? Okay, uh, let, me, let me come in this instance. It's like someone who has um, uh, uh, swam across uh, <laughs> the, the the red, oh, the red Sea, full of sharks. <laughs> now, he wants to compete at Olympics, just to me, put here to here. It's like uh, <laughs> an easy buy for him, for her. So for her to survive Nigerian politics, Nigerian environment, mm. the, the so-called heated environment, while she was now 25 years in World Bank, she was in for, for World Bank for 25 years, there was no time in history that we had that her, her mom or her dad was kidnapped. But while a minister in Nigeria, just because she was fighting corruption, they kidnapped her mom, they asked for ransom, or she resigned and other things like that. The ransom they asked was she should resign, or, why, or they keep, they continue. So if someone can survive such uh, hostility uh, or such a um, uh, um, very tense environment, I don't think um, any other economy or any other position would be difficult for her to. So she has both foreign touch and then the local touch. So mm. whichever we want to. Uh, it's like Nigeria has, has, has um, to a very large extent built her or has uh, made that uh, has fortified her. So oh, in yeah, of, I, yes, I, yeah, I want to say fortified her. So in terms of her. African... Although she started out always wanting to be a developmental economist. Yeah, developmental right economist. Right from when she was a kid. Okay, exactly. You know, yeah, exactly. when she went and started out... Uh, uh, yeah, and she also brought that to, 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 to bear in, in, the, in the World Bank. So mm. if we pull all this, both, both international exposure and then the, the grassroots experience that she had in Nigeria together, so uh, you realize that she surely would, she surely would do well in the so-called... Uh, I mean, uh, World, World Trade uh, Organization because we are looking at 146 economies. So f among them are the the top uh, the world the uh, uh, the leading economies, and among them also are the major emerging economies. Mm -hmm. So she has both experience of World Bank mm -hmm. to deal with the leading uh, the leading economies, then the experience of Africa, or, uh, sorry Nigeria, to deal with African countries and other developing or other uh, emerging economies. So she's for me the most right, the right candidate to run this. Um, uh, this office for the next four years. And I, I even see her being, being reappointed for the next uh, four years again to make eight years. So, Indeed. You know, because she surely will have uh, <laughs> a transformation, uh, a lot of transformation. You can imagine, the minute was, she was um, appointed, just yesterday, she said she already, they are already kicking the ground running. That's so right. someone of purpose, mm. she already knows what to do even mm. without going into the office. So what, what, what does 
the World Trade Organization do for younger viewers? I, I've no doubt they've heard about it because um, people root for Nigerians. Um, but what exactly uh, does W2, WTO do for the youths among uh, our viewers? Okay, so let me just uh, use this opportunity to quickly uh, go back to history. Because was, yes, somebody was saying, have you seen WTO, WTO? What is WTO? I said, oh, it is World Trade Organization. Uh, you know, after the World War in um, 1944, different, the, the economists came together. Economists, uh, we have the likes of... Uh, uh, um, um, uh, Ari, Ari, uh, Ari White, J J.M. Keynes, and the likes in 1944, they came together to uh, meet at a Bretton Woods uh, conference in the United States. And part of the discussion or part of the, the recommendation give back to World, World Bank that we have today, International Monetary Bank, uh, IMF, of 19, both of them being established in 1994 and 1995, respectively. Then uh, they also tried to have an organization, I mean, uh, a, a treaty where what economic um, countries of the world or economies of the world can come together and do trade freely or relieve, reduce tax, uh, tariff on trade. So they try to do that one way and they formed what they call International uh, Trade Organization, ITU. But because the United Nations was not uh, part of, was not uh, ready to sign the treaty, the treaty didn't say the line of the date. So they look at um, GATT, which is a um, general, accept, um, general acceptable uh, uh, agreements on trade general and agreement on tariff and trade. Yeah. So. So they came up with that in 1947 uh, stroke 48, and that was in existence till 1st of, October, 1st of um, January 1995. That is, uh, the, the GATT trans, uh, metamorphosed into the what we call World Trade Organization today. And from 23, station, uh, 23 nations that started GATT in 1947-48, we now have 123 members starting it in 19, uh, uh, January 1st, uh, 1995. And as we speak today, we have 146 members running with the last two being Afghanistan and Liberia, joining them in 2016. So mm. we, we have 146. So mm. the essence is actually to ensure that there is an economic uh, uh, transaction. But if you also go by, by what the, Because um, uh, the, the, it, this being sort of um, evolving out of GATT, G-A-T-T, yeah, uh, General Agreement on Trades and Tariffs, it yeah. sort of explains a bit about the essence, uh, the, the essence of WTO. What, WTO you know. The essence actually is to ensure that there's a, a economic integration. Mm. That is because it's like um, uh, protectionism and then uh, liberalism. Everybody knows that protectionism doesn't pay off. It's like uh, saying I want to protect my company. No, it's not my com my my, my uh, country. Instead of protecting, why not go into trade? Competition will make everybody better off. Yeah, you know, you know, Trump said America first. America first. America, America first. first. Then if you also say I keep say America first, then what happens to the rest of the world? You can't. You can't. Nobody's an island. No, Nobody no, survives no. alone. Yeah. So state of water key is no more in existence as we all see. No nation of the world, even if it's a form of technology, even not Korea as we see, also gets get something from uh, the rest of the world. And also if you look at the benefits, so far so good. We have seen that. In, because of the existence of a World Trade Organization since 1995, tariffs on international businesses has gone down by nothing less than 44, 42%. So that has to tell you that the, the organization is doing more and will continue to do more. And it's also the largest uh, um, economic uh, association in the mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. There's okay. no, there's no yeah. other okay, One second, please. Let me, let me take uh, Mr. Ibrahim in Kaduna. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Mr. Yuri. Good morning, sir. Thank you for calling in. Go ahead, please. Thank you so much. Yes. In fact, this issue this morning is so fantastic in the history for the, for, for the Nigerian people and indeed Africa in general. You see, one thing I want to do, I will first of all congratulate Dr. Mrs. Ungozi Okonjo Iweala for attaining this great and historic seat as of yesterday, this month. You see, what God has already destined to happen, it must surely happen. You, you can see what God has do for this country, this our nation. We love this country because we have so many potential human beings, mm -hmm. and it is product that we need to sell out. But some elements, some enemy of this country, will continue to suppress us and suppress us. They will never surpass. I will surpass them. You see, Umbanye we Wiela is not just a blessed for Nigeria or the sub region of Africa, but on, for the world at large. Because why? This is a woman. We have, when you look at his biog biography so far, all what he has is so fantastic. So, I was so delighted this morning for you for people to bring this issue, this matter out. You see? This is what we need to do. That our, our women, we need to encourage men. All right, then. So, try to come up, up so that we'll be able to surpass and go to another land. Thank you With very this much. accolade, okay. the song on him, it's too much. So all that, others, this is just few among the rest. 
There are more that coming. Well, of course, we were not around. <laughs> but may God continue to give him the strength to share this thing that is going to have. Uh, this, so, so pilot this affair that is going on. Indeed. So, and um, by God's grace, God Almighty, we make Nigeria great and greater again. Thank you very much for having my call. Bye. Th thank you very much, uh, Mr. Ibrahim, calling uh, in there from Kaduna. Mm -hmm. Indeed, yeah, right, rightly so. He's proud. All Nigerians are proud. Um, uh, where much is being made of the fact that um, first woman, uh, but that wasn't the, I'm sure that wasn't the sentiment. Um, it just so happened that she, she was the best person for the job, for the job. and she happened to be a woman. Yes. And, um, you know, that, that, I, 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 I imagine that's the way. Yeah. She happened to be a woman. She's the most qualified, the best qualified. Uh, everybody agrees. This is yeah. not a matter of an arrangement or a battle exactly. or anything like that. Um, we have Sterling. It wasn't favorizing. It, it was wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> and um, as Mr. Ibrahim said, uh, there are many, many, many Nigerian women of uh, substance. substance. And okay. um, Ogunjo Iwele has come out of that. But beyond all of those nice things, it now becomes one of um, doing the job. And she has indicated that uh, she's been an achiever, uh, so much so that she's, she has the nickname of a woman of first. Mm -hmm. She's an, been an achiever all her life, and her passion um, seems to be uh, developmental uh, economics. Econ e economics. And so this is where, um, I, I guess, the, the, for instance, l l look at one of the main, very broad sort of umbrellas that she's going to be working with, which is to bring some soccer to emerging economies, economies yeah. having been hit uh, right. as badly as they have by COVID-19. Because arguably, well, God has been very, very kind to, to Africa. Africa uh, it's still confounding the world how our disaster tally is is where it is at <laughs> <laughs> you know uh, yeah. that, that that that's that's something that we have to be thankful for uh, only god knows himself how he arranged how that in there happened. exactly yes. but the kind of because governments have found themselves spending much much more money than they actually would have uh, in the circumstance or because of this global pandemic okay. and i think she has rightly recognize along with a lot of other developmental experts that this is going to need some sort of help, some sort of assistance yeah. uh, to uh, especially the emergent uh, economies, uh, economies yeah. around the world. I mean, it's all right. People are uh, Americans, uh, Brit, uh, the British, and uh, all those people are talking about all the palliatives that they are getting, mm -hmm. although we are also hearing complaints from there too, that sure, not sure, everybody is so getting what getting it too. seems that. But, you know, they uh, arguably, we can say, uh, just have the dollars to spend. We and a lot of our other African countries are not in the same boat exactly. Yeah. How do you think her very broad idea uh, that she's going to be working on, whatever aspect of it, will bring the soccer that she was speaking about to the... Um, okay. Uh, let me come uh, in. But, but, but please hold the thought and um, okay. let me just take Mr. George in Ikeja okay. and then I'll come back to you for the answer. Right. Good morning, Mr. George. Yeah, good oh, morning. Sorry. I'm already... sorry, it's John. Yes, John. Good, good morning, You're John. Right. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Yori. Go um, ahead, please. I don't want to be a cool killjoy. You know, the Nigerian people are busy celebrating and happy. Well, I will join them in celebrating, but for different reasons. Okay. You know, if you remember when Mrs. Okonjo Ewela was the coordinated minister, she had the opportunity to place us on the farm foundation. She had the opportunity to make the refineries work and even to build more refineries because that is our area of comparative advantage. She did not do that. When you are mouthing that you want to industrialize, the first thing you do is to ensure that there is adequate power supply at a good cost. She never did that. As coordinating minister, she had the opportunity to bring down interest rates to ensure that you know, access to funds would be easy with coordinating with the uh, central bank governor. She didn't. She didn't discourage the then General Obasanjo and his successor from banning the importation of goods. She was a protectionist. So how has she suddenly changed? 
to become a free trader and to even arrive at the top of the WTO. Well, let her friends, you know, uh, rejoice with her. I rejoice with her as a person. But I do not see how that her position can benefit us, just as her being a top-ranking official of the World Bank didn't benefit us. That's okay, thank you very thank much for calling in, John. And it's, it's good that you said at the top that you didn't intend to rain on her parade or anything like that, uh, but these were your perspectives. Uh, what, what, how, how would you comment on, on uh, John? Let me quickly react on to John's what uh, Mr. Yeah. John said. Uh, as, an, as an economist, not even a, not as a... Uh, uh, okay, let me suggest that as an economist. Um, you can't separate economics from politics. If you want to do that, you are just deceiving yourselves like um, the uh, proverbial or, uh, ostrich. Because even if you make recommendations, you, make, you can't execute anything on your own. You make recommendations to the president. And the president said, no, we are not doing that now. This is what we want to do. What do you want to do? Do you want to force yourself, your opinion on the president or on the uh, economy? So if you said the refinery was not done, was not, was she... She was, number one, she wasn't the uh, Minister of Petroleum during that period. She was the Coordinating Minister. She was a uh, Minister of Finance. But at the same time, everything still ends on... I'm not taking a brief for her, yeah. but I'm trying to like give an, uh, an, 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 um, uh, uh, a case for her. And I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So that if she couldn't persuade um, her president... The president to do, there's nothing mm. she can do. She can't say because, okay, I want to uh, go into... Um, 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 I, want to be, I want to be known for something. Then I take money on my own and spend in, refin in, in revamping the refinery. That is one. And again, Again, in terms of being a protectionist in, um, during the Obasanjo regime, it was the policy of the day. Obasanjo came that time and he said, buy Nigeria, build Nigeria, do everything Nigeria. So she had nothing but to bring up policies to support that. And if you also look at, if you also look at the number of billionaires that, was, that were made between 1999 and 2007 during the Obasanjo regime, they are, it's, it's unprecedented in Nigeria in the history of Nigeria. So, because they, they, they brought everybody to look inward. And if you also look at the so-called uh, 20, sorry, the 30 billion uh, Paris Club uh, debt that she negotiated 60% relief from, which are translate, translated to 18 billion, the 18 billion uh, dollar relief that we got. It was because they look at the transformation that was happening at mm -hmm. home. Mm -hmm. That, okay, Nigeria is actually b bringing, uh, bringing up businesses. That's how we have the likes of Dangote, the likes of uh, uh, MTN, the Glow, and all of them came, coming up. So if when they look at it, okay, these people, if you can't give them money, then let us get debt relief. So to okay. an extent, yeah. why, why are we not looking at those positive side? Why the negative side? Okay. Then again, you know, you know, I'm, even, I'm sorry. I can't even we, say that's we, negative. We, 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 it's we, the policy of the day as at oh, that time. Okay. Yeah. And in fact, we've used up all the time, and there was a question outstanding wow, that you were going to talk about but i'm sorry that's going to have to be for oh, another time because i know that <laughs> these economic things you can't just say them in a few you seconds and uh, we've, we've completely run out of time my I, I accept the blame for my management of time i'm sorry okay, about no that problem, um, no problem, i sorry. should have been able to factor in i asked a question you're about to answer and yeah, then but thank thing. you very much john for bringing in that you know that perspective and that has taken us in in this direction we congratulate uh, uh, Ngozi Okonjo Iweala, and we look forward to um, you know great things in in her new um, aspect of her career. That's our program today. Then, um, as always, as we go, we remind you: socially distance, you know uh, that whole social distance thing. Please keep all of that mask. Wash your hands as much as possible. You see it on television, you hear it on radio all the time. Please pay attention and don't expose yourself to crowds. Okay, that's my rant for the day. I'll see you tomorrow, God willing. I'm Yori Folani. Bye-bye for now.